Okay. Huh? Oh, okay. Go ahead. All right. So today looks like a little bit about alcohol. So you guys are high school seniors. What are some things that you hear around school about alcohol and maybe how guys like to have fun? I think you have something like that. It, it, it tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. What about you? Nah, I'm not a fan. I've been around it a lot. Tastes good. Tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Um, so it looks like we might need this lesson. <laughs> so, uh, an alcohol drink is a drink that contains ethanol, a type of alcohol produced by fermentation of grains, fruits, other sources of sugar. In today's lesson, we're going to talk a little about how alcohol affects the body. Uh, we're going to talk about this. Hopefully, this kind of changes your perspectives of alcohol and makes you look at it a little differently so you can make better choices when it comes to alcohol. We're going to talk about the laws and regulations about alcohol so that you're informed on what you can and cannot do, how alcohol plays a part in society. I know that's a big thing, especially at you guys' age, uh, social media and uh, the media period. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> okay, um, Megan, can you read all the way up to brain? How alcohol affects the body. Alcohol can affect the brain by interfering with the brain's communication pathways. It can affect the way the brain looks and works. Brain, can you read heart? Um, can damage the heart, causing cardio, my feet, yeah. stretching and drooping of heart muscle arrhythmia, stroke, and high blood pressure. Josh, can you remember? The liver can lead to a variety of problems and liver inflammations, including steatosis or fatty liver, uh, alcoholic hepatitis, fibrosis, formation of, which is the formation of excessive fibrous connective tissue, and cirrhosis, which is like stage of scarring. Can you read pancreas out? <clears throat> uh, causes the pancreas to produce toxic substances that can eventually lead to pancreatitis. Pancreatitis. A dangerous inflammation and swelling of the blood vessels in the pancreas that prevents proper. Cool. So outside of these things, uh, what are some effects that you witness? through maybe friends or family of alcohol or alcoholism. So I'll start. I know a lot of the men, older men in my family who drink a lot, they have these big bellies. So yeah. Uh, so that's an example. So what are some other things that you guys can think of? Like cirrhosis from, you're asking what we've seen? Is that yeah, like some physical. What? Type things, some physical type things you see? Yeah, like cirrhosis, like their liver starts to get scarred over. What about some things like maybe on the outside you kind of notice? Um, bloodshot eyes. Red nose, like oh, yeah. red nose. Okay. Anybody else? They, their balance is interfered with, they can't really walk straight. Yeah. Make yeah. sure pupils really small. Yeah. Out.
The way we measure alcohol intake is through the unit system. You've probably come across it when your doctor asks how many units you drink every week. There are some rule of thumb methods used to estimate units. For instance, half a pint of beer or a small glass of wine are approximately one unit. If you want to be more accurate, you can use this formula to work out the number of units in a drink. Multiply the volume of the drink in litres, or millilitres divided by 1,000, by the percent alcohol by volume, or ABV. For example, a standard-sized bottle of wine is 750 millilitres, three-quarters of a litre, and has, say, 12% alcohol by volume. That means that the number of units in the whole bottle is three-quarters of 12, <coughs> that is, nine units. Doctors recommend that men drink no more than four units a day, and women not more than three. Question, so why do you think that is, like why does it vary between men and women? Typically because men, is, men are larger than women. Gotcha. Yeah, I was gonna say though, men usually weigh more. The difference arises because women generally have less water in their bodies to dilute the alcohol, which makes them more susceptible to alcohol intoxication. It's also important to remember that nowadays we have a daily recommended allowance rather than a weekly one. That's because binge drinking is extremely bad for you. It increases blood pressure, puts a strain on the liver, and can actually cause a heart attack. It's much less harmful to have two pints of beer in five days of the week rather than having ten pints on a Friday night. But it's best not to drink every day. Give your liver one or two days off. Drinking a small amount of alcohol and again, you don't have to drink at all. protects against coronary heart disease by increasing your HDL cholesterol levels. That's the good kind of cholesterol. Alcohol can also influence factors in your blood, such as platelets and fibrinogen, that cause your blood to coagulate. This helps to lower the risk of a blood clot. And don't worry too much about which type of alcohol you choose to drink. Research has shown that the risk or benefit is determined not so much by what you drink, as by the pattern of drinking. How? So, prior to this video, how many of you thought, like, maybe one drink is better than drinking another? You mean type of drink? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I always thought wine was better than other stuff. Gotcha. Than what? That's Whiskey? what I was going to say. Yeah. That's, yeah, I've heard that too. How much and how often?
you have to show your ID. They're supposed to ask for it. Um, in 18, sta 18 states, 18 states, probably sell alcohol beverages to pregnant women. Uh, for your blood alcohol content, like you just said, is point zero eight or higher, you're considered legally impaired in the U.S. What are some other laws concerning alcohol that you're aware of? Um, I didn't know 18 states prohibited the sale of alcohol to pregnant women. Yeah. Um, don't quote me on this, but I, I did, yeah, sometimes doctors actually um, tell some pregnant women that they can drink a little bit of wine during their pregnancy, but I'm not too sure. So, alcohol in society, I think. Uh, we all know like media, social media, advertisements, music, uh, things of that nature. They have a, a huge effect on like the consumption of alcohol, how it's advertised, and and how people uh, view it. Uh, television, radio, film, and popular music are often identified as potential sources through which young people learn about alcohol, and as potential influences on young people, and as potential influences on young people's drinking and drinking problems. So how are, what are some examples of the ways of alcohol portrayed in the media that you guys come across a lot? Social. Social media, so like what type of stuff do you see on social media? Uh, a lot of ads for um, whatever brand or magazine ads, maybe. What do you say? Magazine ads. Magazine ads, yeah. I was going to say that you have to be on a beach to drink alcohol. It's <laughs> <laughs> like every commercial. Yeah, a lot of commercials have that. Uh, talking about social media, uh, besides ads, like, you know, maybe like tweets that other people tweet, what are some things, you know, people are saying about alcohol on Twitter, like when it comes to like weekend, you know, football games, parties, things like things of that nature? It's becoming normalized by social events. Gotcha. You were going to say something? Yeah, uh, I was going to say, like, you see a lot of, especially people our age, saying, like, how they can't wait for the weekend so that they can. Right. Kind of like a stress relief form, so that's right. kind of normalization. Like, that's the way that they be stress. So you guys, as high school seniors, how does that affect you? Like, how does that make you look at you? Are you ever tempted to maybe, well, I'm not going to ask you that. But how does that affect you seeing, seeing that a lot of time or uh, seeing how it's advertised? A lot of people get excited for spring break. Gotcha. For that reason. Gotcha. Well, it just makes it seem like it's okay, or that maybe you, know, you see those ads that you know if you drink you be like older. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Um. You know, you guys are about to go to college, or you like, go in the real world. Uh, how has alcohol become a, a cultural norm? kind of talked about it already, but like... It's almost expected when you go to college. Right, right. Um, what about as an adult? I know like some people like to feel mature by drinking wine. Um, Just a lot of parties, adult parties, they have alcohol there. Right. Uh, so from the ads you have seen, how does it try to portray, I know you said beaches and things like that, like how does it try to portray alcohol? Fun. Fun. Okay. Yeah, you say fun. You kind of want the crowd. You know, feel left out. You never seen the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You got that? Uh, relaxing. Like de, de stress. Cool. Okay. It never shows the bad stuff. Yeah. yeah. That. Uh, so who are they targeting? Us. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I just uh, want to show you a couple examples. I went like a summer or two ago. The. Uh, Capricorn drink was uh, advertised a lot on social media through uh, just peers and friends. Um, what I is it? Capricorn? I think that's what it says. Is it beer? I don't think that, that's why I know what it says. Yeah, it's some sangria thing. Yeah, um, I think it's sangria. Okay, yeah. I was trying to read that, that talk, but yeah, that was real popular for a while. I've seen a couple people with this shirt on, it says anything is possible. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, this past summer, people were using like, the slogan, you know, drive the boat with life. Um, you, got, you guys probably know what that means. Drive the boat? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Oh, I'm all stupid on here. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but you know. Uh, uh, Atlas is our heavy use of television. Here's a little article. Um, it is basically talking about how uh, this is a study done back in 2016, and according to the study, American kids see about three adult ads each day, and you know, that doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, I believe it said, you know, that adds up to, uh, that was as they've seen over the course of the year, so that can have a, a large effect on how someone might see uh, alcohol. Uh, here's just two really quick examples of uh, how ads portrayed. I mean, we talked about beach, and they're on the beach, and they're with their friends, and, and at the top it's sip on sunshine, so they really tried to make it seem like, you know, it's, it's heaven. But, <sighs> But if you know like, how it affects the body and uh, and the effects it can have on you, I think you can make a, a wider decision when it comes to drinking alcohol or the number you drink. And then here's another ad. It talks about Hennessy. And it says, civilized way to charm a lady. So uh. <laughs> a little bit of sex appeal, you know, you guys, your age, you know, trying to get on ladies. You might, you might try to go buy some Hennessy. So just a couple um, <clears throat> questions. What are some ways that alcohol affects the body that you've learned today and you know from uh, past knowledge? It hinders your vision. Yes, it does. Messes up your balance. It does. Breaks down your liver over time. Okay. Uh, Thank you.